I can tell you from personal experience that uh, Kinaps makes my life a lot easier as an AI engineer. We're looking at one of the uh, encounters from Gardez, the first level of Medal of Honor. And uh, what I'm, I'm showing right now is all the data that's generated by Kinaps for this particular encounter. And you can see how rich the data set is. The blue lines uh, represent the move graph. Um, the move graph re represents uh, where the characters can go in the environment. And it's also a tool for them to be able to explore outwards and find a good place for them to go. The green lines that you see, uh, those represent the cover nodes, um, and that's somewhere that the character can go in order to perform cover combat, to hide behind a wall, to peri periodically go out and fire. In addition, you'll see the uh, pink lines uh, in this graph, and that represents what Kinaps calls the AI mesh, which is simply the boundary between what is pathable space and what is not pathable space. So if on a given game update, the character wanted to go from a point outside the AI mesh to a point inside the AI mesh, we would disallow it because that would cause him to go outside the pathable space. So this is just one localized um, map builder. And what's great about the latest editions of Kinaps is that they allow the uh, game team to split up the uh, graphs into as many pieces as they want. Um, so this is just one encounter. And if I go over here and select uh, this volume, you'll see uh, another uh, graph light up. And we can break this into as many pieces as we want, which has the advantage of uh, minimizing the memory cost. We only stream in the maps that we need for a particular encounter. And it also means that the designer uh, has to wait, spend less time waiting for paths to build because he only has to do it, build paths for the encounter that he's interested in. In Medal of Honor, it's important for our characters to be able to understand the environment around them. And with Kinaps, we have a natural way to be able to explore the environment and find good places for our characters to go. So right now we're looking at uh, Gardez in action. Gardez is the first level of Medal of Honor. And right now we're on the rail ride. I'm going to skip to uh, the first encounter after the rail ride. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you at runtime all the various tools that we had for visualizing the data coming from Kinaps. So here I am with uh, Voodoo, my partner. Uh, I'm going to type in a command, which will draw the move graph. Uh, the move graph here is represented by a sequence of white nodes and white lines. And the pink lines that you see here are the, uh, the boundaries of the AI mesh, which we all, we've also seen as well. So now I'm drawing uh, the cover nodes. And, and again, Kinaps is great because it's really easy to embed additional data in, in the graph, including um, cover nodes. Uh, with cover nodes, they're associated with the, uh, the move verts in the graph. So there can be one or more cover nodes associated with any given uh, move vert. The way we've generated cover, uh, the, the colors here represent the different types of cover. So uh, the color might tell you whether it's stand left cover or stand right cover. And we also have uh, the triangles, which show you the, uh, the shoot angle as well as the height angle for the given cover node. So in addition, um, we've also embedded visibility data in, into the Kinaps um, uh, graphs. So uh, visibility data is helpful because it'll tell us whether or not a given cover node has visibility to another point on the graph. So I'm going to go ahead and visual, visualize that. As I move around, you'll see um, a sequence of lines uh, activate, which represent the visibility from uh, this cover node to all the other uh, nodes in the environment. So if a line is red, that means that during the Kinaps uh, graph um, generation process, uh, we determined that this cover node does not have visibility to the nodes over there because it's red. Uh, if it's green, it means that we, it does have visibility. So if, if the character is looking for a cover node that's going to shoot uh, uh, in the direction straight in front of me, um, then this cover node is probably sufficient because it's, it's green. Uh, however, if he's looking to shoot at an enemy on the other side of that wall, it's not going to work. It's red. And so uh, because we're able to embed all that information in the Kinaps uh, graph, uh, we didn't have to. We were able to save precious uh, cycles at runtime, um, improve performance because that data was already baked. So next, I'd like to show you uh, how we're able to embed a lot of our AI within the Kinaps architecture. Uh, one part of the AI, of course, is enemy selection: who it is that uh, the character is going to choose as an enemy, uh, which turns out to be. Uh, pretty important because, you know, there's a balance between uh, the player not getting enough attention and the player getting too much attention. So let's, let's go ahead and, and pause the AI and you'll see these characters running in place. Now I'm only going to activate a given character, this one right here. 
So everyone else is running in place, their AI is off. And I wanna, I wanna look at this one character in particular and see how he's choosing enemies. So a yellow line means that I'm his current enemy. And, uh, and it's also gonna show you my threat level. It's 2380, which is gonna be higher than uh, the other character on my team with Voodoo. His threat level is only 767. And that's because he's further away from uh, the character and he's also not visible to him. If, if I was to back away though, I'm gonna become less interesting of a threat and you're gonna see that line turn from yellow to green like it just did. And now Voodoo is the current enemy. So next I'd like to show you how uh, we used KinApps to be able to find the best path to a destination. So I'm gonna tell this Taliban character to move from where he is right now to a spot like over here. And we're gonna draw his path. So I'm gonna go in slow-mo here and you can see the yellow lines uh, that represent uh, each sub-goal that'll get him to the final destination. And those sequence of nodes are given to us uh, from KinApps uh, using the A-star algorithm uh, with modifications that we've made to do things like avoid the line of fire. We're able to use the graph uh, that KinApps gives us to be able to understand the environment and to choose good places to go to, including cover. Uh, I'm gonna tell him to move to a spot over here. So when you see those white nodes light up, that means that the character is looking around because right now he's not in cover and uh, he'd prefer to be in cover, so he's exploring. Is there a good cover node to go to right now? And the answer it keeps coming back, no. There's nowhere that has good cover. I'm gonna give him another spot to move to over here and uh, let's see what he does. So you can see the white lines light up. Okay, so I'm gonna tell him to come uh, over here and uh, see if he's able to find a cover node. Okay, so you just saw him go into cover there. Uh, he was exploring the environment around the cart and he found a, uh, a cover node that provided sufficient uh, shootability and met all the other constraints to be valid. We're looking at a uh, simple gym that I've created for the purposes of testing our AI. Um, in this case, I want to um, highlight uh, the dynamic avoidance behavior. So I'm spawning in a number of characters that are going to be going back and forth between two nodes. And uh, what you can see is how they uh, dynamically steer to avoid each other. I'm going to turn on some debug lines so you can um, get a better idea of how it works, showing uh, their sub goals as they move. Okay, so uh, you might notice the, uh, the yellow uh, coordinate axes that represents uh, the sub goal for the characters. And you can see as they get close to each other how those the yellow coordinate axes are moving around. And that tells the character that he needs to steer in order to avoid uh, his partners. As an AI engineer, I don't want to have to uh, be bogged down in uh, the lower level details of how you build an AI. And so uh, KinApps is great because I, I can just take those lower level details for granted and I can focus on what's important for our game.